Hello YouTube, welcome to the Avion blog. So today on the Avion blog we're just going to take a look at a few new electronics items which have arrived uh, from China. One of them is this little um, USB voltmeter current meter jobby that we're going to be doing some tests on and then of course we're also going to take a look at these um, power supply module projects and see how they stack up, uh, what the quality is like etc and then of course we'll do some testing on all of these devices and uh, see how they basically work, how accurate they are, etc. Oh, and before I forget, we've also got a couple of these um, Chinese voltmeters, uh, which we're going to be taking a look at as well on this episode. So let's get straight into it before I waste any more of your time with this face, and uh, let's play around with a bit of these electronics gizmos. G'day everybody and welcome to the Evion channel. Today we're going to talk about some of the new stuff that's come into stock here at uh, Evion. Um, like these power boards etc and we're going to talk a little bit about their functionality uh, the assembly of them the quality of the boards etc and generally what i think about them now these boards were ordered from china for a project which i'm doing with the local university guys for uh, electronics power supplies for their tests and for their projects if you want to call them that and then i thought well why is why are they not making them um sort of projects for the pupils so anyway just to go through one of these projects over here this is what an assembled board minus the power transistor looks like um, let's see if we can get a bit closer and we can take a look at the various components etc on the board from the input to the output so as you can see here we've got our output and here we've got our input now this is an ac 24 volt input through the bridge rectifiers smoothing capacitor and then obviously this power gets fed to the power transistor which would usually be here and then of course you've got some circuitry uh, for adjusting current and voltage limiting etc uh, you've got a zero voltage adjust over here and this is where your trim pots would go in for your volts and currents your current limit and your current set voltage um, and then of course you've got your DC output now is a output here for a 24 volt fan as well as a 24 volt voltage regulator over here for that fan my only concern there oh, it should be fine without a heatsink because um, i'll be talking very very low current sort of um, dc brushless fans and stuff like that anyway and then on the bottom you can have a look here um, now i soldered this one myself so it's it's not a very difficult project to solder it does not come with these um, sockets these ic sockets so i just threw some ic sockets on there just to make it a little bit simpler if you need to change a chip or whatever the case may be but let's have a look at the kit now so let's just get this a little bit wider and here we have one of the kits so what what is included in this kit pretty much everything you need to make this including some test trim pots not the best because i do recommend uh, multi-turn pots when it comes to using trim pots especially for the voltage adjustment on these but um, for a basic project or for setting up it's more than adequate to get the job done so from that aspect it's very nice um, it's a nice little kit it's easy you can sort of put it together in an hour um, find a box for it and build yourself a nice variable voltage 0 to 3 amp power supply now just to talk a little bit about these power supplies um, they come with a power transistor which is quite well specced um, for the sort of current that we're talking about but it does get quite hot so I do recommend getting yourself a fairly decent heat sink when it comes to making use of these otherwise you are going to have a problem with uh, heat dissipation etc um, now to go along with these I also picked up a couple of these voltmeters um, they're actually a really nice little voltmeter uh, let's just show you one of them uh, these voltmeters are basically volts only you can get them in current and voltage but i went for the volts only edition um i thought i had an open one and i do yes here we go um you can get the volts only edition such as these over here just where you want a more accurate voltage to be displayed um, this one has its power and then of course it's read voltage here you've got the power cables and then this is the read voltage with a common negative so let's just connect it up to a fixed power supply, uh, I'll somewhat fix it around 12 volts and see what we get on the display. So first things first, we've got to connect the power. Fortunately this device can run from 0 to I think 24 volts on the power side um, when it's working. Uh, 
I don't know if we've got power coming out of the sockets at the moment. Probably not, which is weird because that is a 12 volt power line. Uh, maybe it just wasn't contacting properly. Anyway, so there we have the display up and running um, on the unit. And just to turn it the right way, there you go. And now we're just going to connect the test lead to the 12 volt point. Well, it's 12 point something volts. 12.507 is what it was reading there, 12.508. I'm just going to measure this with a multimeter quickly and see what voltage we get on the power. Twelve point five oh I'm reading on the multimeter. So I'd say that's pretty accurate. Let's just go to the five volts and before we do anything, let's actually measure the DC five volt rail with a multimeter and see what voltage we get over there. 5.158 it looked like. 5.1 Sorry, the lead's in the way. Also a bit of an angle for me to be operating my leads at. So you got 5.158 volts on that rail. So let's check how that tallies up now with this little meter. 5.158 it is and when we do our measurement what do we have 5.157 5.158 so yeah I would say these little voltmeters are actually very accurate um, all considering so yeah that's quite nice and it's a nice way of being able to adjust your voltage um, on these little power supplies. So we'll be including these voltmeters on the projects we're going to be doing now. Um, you can make these things out of Arduinos and stuff, but you know what, these things are so cheap, it's just easy to buy them. And you bundle them up with the, the system and Bob's your uncle, you got yourself a nice little uh, test power supply or project power supply for doing your projects. So that is the one thing that I wanted to show you guys. Um, one of the other things that's come in that I want to test and play around with is a USB voltmeter, which I will show you now. This little guy over here, um, it's a USB voltmeter or power analyzer, whatever you want to call it. And um, yeah, I'm pretty keen to play with that and see how that stacks up. Um, I just need to get a USB cable out of one of the drawers over here and we can toy around with it. Um, so yeah, I think let's do that and uh, see how this little fella here actually works. It's got quite a nice little OLED display, etc. And it's quite portable and it can monitor the power through the device as well. So you can plug your USB device in there and see how much power you're actually pulling from the USB. Very nice. Not too badly made either and it's got a reset button here to reset the power over or the watt meter or power consumption meter whatever it is so let's um, take a closer look at this little thing right so here we have just a bit of USB power from our USB hub here we have the device plug it in and you can see the display let's see how close we can get in over there as you can see we got 5.2 volts 5.21 volts, whatever it is, coming off the power supply of that USB hub. So if you were to plug a device in, such as your phone or a USB drive or whatever the case may be, you'll actually get um, a current drain from said device. Um, I don't have a phone anywhere near me right now to plug in. And I'm just looking for a USB drive and um, I'm not finding one, funny enough usually they're lying all over the place here yeah. but um, yeah if you plug in a USB drive that is for example faulty it might give you an overcurrent reading or whatever the case may be um, it's quite a nice little piece of device anyway I found a USB cable so I can plug my phone in so you just plug that in over there and let's see what my phone will utilize on charge plugging my phone in now and there you can see the amp drain. Um, we're running at about just over half an amp, and you can see 
the milliamp hour sort of readings and uh, so on and so forth and yeah there you go it'll basically log how long I'm gonna leave it for a couple of moments and then we'll time lapse it so you can see how long it was running for etc uh, the power utilized over that time and so on and so forth so let's just let that record and go to time lapse Right, so I don't think it's necessary to let it run much more than about two three minutes so you can see this would basically be hour minutes the voltage you see it's come down now current and the milliamps per hour so how many amps for an hour or whatever the case may be um, but yeah it's actually quite a handy little device especially for diagnosing faulty uh, USB ports or power supplies or whatever the case may be like I'm not happy with this power supply as you can see the voltage is dropping and raising quite a bit so that could be a problem um, but that's because I'm using a small switch mode power supply but all in all quite a nice little device I must say it works quite phenomenally and uh, definitely gets the job done quite handy in your IT toolkit so something to think about right so the next step in this video is we're going to check the accuracy of this device now obviously this voltage is a bit runny around here but I'm not gonna stress too much about that. We're just gonna check the more or less accuracy of the current meter on here and see how it um, stacks up against a proper red current. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a proper load that'll enable us to load this device to a known value and then see how accurate it is and then compare it maybe with a multimeter and see how it stacks up. So I think that's gonna be our next step now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set that all up and then uh, I'll be back in a, in a flash. Okay, so first things, first things first, we're going to check the voltage. Um, as we can see right now, it is showing 5.21 volts on the actual um, device and on the meter. We're showing 5.128. So 5.20, 5.21 on here and 5.128 on the meter. So the voltage isn't dead accurate, but for what it is, I think that's pretty reasonable. Also bearing in mind, it's measuring the voltage out here. I'm measuring the voltage out on the end of some wires. So there may be some voltage drops, etc., along the way. So yeah, okay, you know what, it gives you an indication and you can see if there's a fluctuating voltage, if there's any problems or anything like that, it'll show up over there which is quite nice so the next thing we're going to try and do is we're going to try and do a current measurement and see if we can measure the actual current and compare it on a multimeter and see how accurate it really is right so right now i've got my cell phone on charge through here i've got the multimeter hooked up in series uh, with the output from this guy over here you can see we're measuring between 0 0.17 and 0 0.21 and this is measuring around 2.29.28. Um, this does peak to that level, there we go, um, but not all the time. So it's quite possible that it's fairly accurate. Look, it's giving you a good indication of what sort of current you're pulling, uh, but it's not a constant load. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and put a constant load and then do a comparison. So give me two seconds. Just need to get my load connected up and then we can do that comparison and see more or less exactly what we are looking at. Right, so here we've got our load, so we need to just connect this correctly. So we don't damage anything, obviously. I don't recommend you do this with your cell phone at home or something unless you know exactly what you're doing because you can create a problem obviously and um, what we're going to do now is we're going to check the current as measured on the load so I'm going to slowly start increasing I'm looking to try and draw around Looks like it only works a 
little bit later because I mean we already got 240 milliamps and we're measuring 160 180 so let's take it to about 0.7 amps we got 0.67 so you can see it's not very accurate yeah we got 0.516 on the multimeter and we got 0.45 on this little analyzer not terrible but not very accurate um, if you're a stickler for accuracy that is so yeah that just gives you a bit of an idea there all right guys so in conclusion basically um, these little devices are quite handy but don't count on the accuracy if you're doing electronics grade measurements because they're not very accurate but what they are useful for is if you're an IT technician or an IT repair tech or something like that and you want to check if something's pulling more current than what it should be on the USB side of things or alternatively um, diagnose USB power issues quite handy it'll um, I mean if you know you've got uh, 500 milliamps on the output socket you plug this and it's going to tell you more or less if you if you're exceeding that uh, I mean if you see six seven eight hundred milliamps on you you know you're exceeding that threshold a um, few little more things just to note about this little guy besides it being neat it does have a little reset button here on the side to reset the counter and time um, basically the power over time measurements or the amp hour rating milliamp hour measurement it is USB 2 not USB 3 so that's just something to take note of um, definitely a nice little piece of hardware just to keep in your IT toolkit um, and yes I'll be popping one of these in my toolkit um, right now as a matter of fact uh, just a few more things that I want to talk about in closing on this video we did speak very briefly about the power supplies the project power supplies and these displays as I've shown you the basic spec and accuracy of these displays in this video they're pretty damn accurate all considering um, the audio I know was a bit shoddy on some of the video work but that was just because I wasn't using the professional microphone at the time but uh, that's been resolved now and of course the power supply boards I've run some tests on them and they're not too bad for what you spend on them they're out of China by the way if any locals here in South Africa want to get their hands on any of these things you can contact me and I can definitely assist you with it in project form ie like this if you don't feel like waiting for something to come from China um, if you want something custom built up for you we can also assist there so guys thanks very much for watching this episode and I do apologize for the long delay in creating video content uh, things have been pretty hectic here at the office um, new staff don't really have much time to make the content during the week but I've decided to dedicate some weekend time and some after hours time to creating my YouTube videos to keep the channel flowing so I do again, once again, apologize for the lack of content, but I'm back. Thanks for watching, and until the next episode, take care.